Hello, traders. Gary Wagner here, approximately 11 a.m. on Wednesday, the 26th day of October. And this is the daily report for gold and silver. We have a nice showing of continuations of yesterday's incredible bull rise up currently about twenty dollars in the gold market as you can see current print on gold is at 172509 that's basis the cash market when we look at our december contract in comex silver currently trading 172340 that was the close in new york today as i said puts it up about twenty dollars on the day about 10 cents higher in the silver market and our current print as you can see is roughly 33 36. On today's report, I want to talk to you about the trade that we put on yesterday, different strategies for protective stops, and what we are looking at over the interim future the next week or so in the gold and silver market, all here on today's daily report. Traders, the first thing that I do want to talk about this morning is the gold market. I did look to buy on a dip a couple of days ago. The following day, the market rose, what, $50. We certainly missed that. My recommendation yesterday was to enter the market at the market. In other words, I didn't believe that we were going to see a dip so quickly and that we had a true breakout in the market. That actually turned out to be correct. The market, of course, now is trading roughly $25 higher than when we made that recommendation. Traders who took that call should be in at around $1,702, $1,703. But here's what I'm finding interesting right now. We talked about the fact that there were a couple of major levels of support and some levels of resistance. The first one was this 1680, and I'm just going to draw that in right in here. That's a 38 percent retracement and it's a retracement from this record high at 1920 all the way down to the bottom of the correction which is about 1533 when we take a look at that and consider that price move you're really looking at a $400 move and more importantly a $400 move that happened right after the call it the beginning of September first week of September and then ended just prior to the month going to an end so you're looking at about a two or three week move in which the market gave back roughly 50 percent and that's 50 percent from the July rally as you can see this July rally starts at roughly 1480 and takes us all the way up to a record top 1920 it's a tremendous move now this is what I'm finding interesting we talked about the fact that there were some critical levels and the first thing that we talked about just a few moments ago was what I consider to be a very very critical level which is 1680 take a look at it here just below 1680 we had that gap and that gap came after this market really ran up and many many traders said that that gap had to come back down and get filled but I talked about the fact that in terms of the next strategic level, what could be very important, it's going to be that 50% level, and it's a 50% level from this recent drop, which takes us to around 1726. And the reason that I believe that to be an important number is when we take a look at this entire move right here, and this is what we're doing our Fibonacci retracement from, a 50% rise takes us right to here, 1726. And that's why I said that our first target is going to be right around there. Now, where did I come up with that number? As I have been talking about in basic Fibonacci retracement and Elliott Wave forecasting, the basic belief is that when this market completes a wave, this being our A wave, and this is the major count, A starting from here to here, within that there is an intermediate count of an A, B, and C, but then this B wave, and this is the wave that we're currently at, should go anywhere between 50 and 75 percent. This is what I'll call our most likely band that this market has an opportunity to have to complete this wave right in here. We have just come but up against the first level of resistance. Where? 1725. We're going to have to see how it reacts in here because if the market in fact stalls a little bit, my belief is that again within each wave it's composed of a minor element you might get something similar to this where the market comes it stalls here trades back down a little bit before going and completing this final part of wave B on our major count 
The last chart that I do want to look at this morning for gold is a 240 minute Hinken Ashi. It's a Japanese average chart. What is interesting is that, of course, the average chart, Japanese average chart, is going to always be a lagging indicator, but what it does very, very eloquently is give us an idea of strength of trend. And really the way that you do that is look at the body size and whether or not there are wicks. On a market that is moving higher, you need to have this absence of wicks right in here. And then the larger the body size, the bottom to the top of this candle, the stronger the trend. And what you can see here is that we have had absolutely zero indication up till now that this trend is beginning to wane again we need to see how it's going to react because it is at a critical area but traders my gut tells me that it probably will have the ability to move through that particular level of resistance let's get to the silver market silver up a little bit but certainly not up in the same ways that we saw the gold market as I said it's currently trading higher it's trading 33 36 as you can see this is a daily chart but once again the one thing that you can see is we did have a range today but we did get this doji this doji is always indicative of a market that is consolidating now in a market that is moving up and especially in the gold and silver market a doji in and of itself does not tell us that we are at a top or a bottom of a market. It is correct that they do appear at tops, as you can see right in here, and they do appear at bottoms of the markets. But what I found in my research is that, especially in the metals markets, as you're on these defined dynamic moves up, you'll notice that there's areas where it consolidates, areas where you'll get uh, periods of dojis before it continues its direction up or down and so typically just because I'm seeing this doji right in here is this doji indicative of a market that's going to consolidate and reverse or a market that's simply taking a breather my sentiment is that it is a market simply taking a breather we are now in the afternoon session as you can see 3344 it is beginning to trade and it is beginning to trade off of the close of the morning session but here's why I think that there's a good opportunity for us to see this market trade higher and that is that 3290 to me that's the 61 percent level and of course that's a retracement level from this $44 top to this $25 low when we consider that this is a 61 percent retracement and the fact that we saw really good support on the daily chart you can see how that low just matched up we can see that it closed above it and we can see that we're also getting follow through I believe this markets going to head higher I also believe that in terms of strategic placement where do I think it's gonna go I still believe that we've got a really good shot to see this market go to $35 per ounce before we run into real resistance. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We'll talk to you tomorrow for another daily update and review. Bye-bye.